Securities joining us. Simon, one welcome to the program. Um, bond yield, yields really globally falling and we've just seen Japan's bond yield falling below zero for the first time. Pretty significant. I guess it's this lift in risk aversion that's driving this demand for, for, for bonds at the moment. Yeah, good afternoon, Leanne. Absolutely. I mean, investors are just trying to get away from the volatility we're seeing in currency and equity markets and seek a bit of relief from that. And uh, look, you know, we're, we're seeing records hit around the globe. We've got the uh, US 10-year record low of 1.36% today. Uh, Japan's 20-year government bond rate, as you said, hitting zero, slightly below. And Australia's 10-year rate at 1.85, record now. Now, let's think about that. The Australian cash rate is 1.75%. And the 10-year rate is 1.85%, 10 basis points in it over 10 years. That's a very flat curve. Yeah, absolutely. Is there further to go? I mean, you know, where to from here? I think down. Down here from here, I think, uh, Leanne, I think uh, we're seeing that reflected in uh, even though um, there is a flight for safety, we're seeing a, a tightening in credit spreads. That means investors are happy to invest right across the credit spectrum. Uh, it's not just your, your government bonds, it's mm -hmm. right across the bond universe. I, I think the market is now building in. If you look at our two-year rate here in Australia, uh, it's about half percent, uh, sorry, about 1.54%. That's suggesting further rate cuts from the RBA, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think any, any uh, chance for the US Fed to increase rates in 2016 mm. is now completely off the table. Yeah, okay. So, so this move that we're seeing in these yields globally, does this tend to be a bit of a leading indicator of what lies ahead sort of economically? Well, it does. I mean, the 10-year really looks at uh, the impact of inflation growth over the long term. And we've certainly seen, as, uh, as you would be aware, inflation dropping off a bit of a cliff there, very, very on the, on the low side, and continued growth down, uh, downgrades as well right across the globe. So the impact of that Brexit vote, uh, a lot of commentary that that's still being felt. We're still working ourselves through that. That's impacting on those global growth forecasts. They're being downgraded, and you're seeing that reflected in the long-term uh, interest rate yields. Simon, what about if we get a strong jobs number there on Friday? Do you still think that you know this move from the Fed could be off the cards. Look, I think it's really out of the uh, out, out of out of the hands at the moment. I think that you know it's global factors really driving this. And you know when you've got uh, global yields continuing to fall, and uh, you know central banks continuing to support markets, and uh, you know expecting that the UK. Um, Central Bank will have to come out and support their markets as well. Rates are going to continue to fall and I think it's very difficult uh, for the US to look to increase rates in that environment or, and I'll put it out there, maybe even hold rates uh, at the current levels in this environment. Uh, certainly some people suggesting they might actually have to pull back uh, if this volatility continues. Mm -hmm. All right, very interesting. Simon, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Leanne. Simon Michelle there from Fig Securities. Well, my guest host, Henry J.